Hello, uh, my name is Maki Nakashima. I'm a graduate student at Texas A&M University Commerce. Today, I would like to talk about our research paper, Evaluation of Deep Learning Model for Network Performance Prediction for Scientific Facilities. Um, uh, this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, I'll start with introduction and then uh, data, data set deep learning models, uh, experiment results, and then finally I'll talk about uh, conclusion. Well, first of all, the reason why we are interested in this research is that uh, in this uh, big data era, uh, large data transfers are getting more and more critical with the increasing volume of data in scientific computing. And uh, in order to uh, support you know, large data transfers, scientific facilities uh, manage dedicated infrastructure with uh, a variety of hardware and software tools. Data transfer nodes, DTNs, are uh, one of the dedicated system to data transfers in uh, scientific facilities that uh, facilitate uh, data this this dissemination uh, of a large scale network. And uh, um, a helpful, helpful resource to infer the current and the future network performance, uh, such as for change, uh, change point and anomaly detection and for throughput and packet loss prediction. Uh, therefore, we uh, use those um, Mm, connection log um, for the uh, our uh, throughput uh, prediction. Uh, this is uh, what we uh, contributed. Uh, first, uh, we analyzed data sets collected from DTNs and then evaluate uh, deep learning models with respect to prediction accuracy of network performance for scientific facilities. Uh, these are um, deep learning models we utilize. Uh, artificial neural network and then uh, convolutional neural network, CNN, uh, gated uh, recurrent units, GRU, and uh, long short term memory, LSTM. And uh, um, now I'm talk about data set. So we we collected data set uh, using TSTATS tool, uh, which collects uh, TCP instru instrumentation data for each flow. And uh, the tool measures the uh, tran transport layer statics, uh, such as the number of bytes packets uh, sent and received the congestion window size and the uh, uh, number of packets uh, retransmitted. And uh, this uh, data set in includes uh, incoming and outgoing data, but uh, we only utilize the um, incoming data because we are more interesting, interested in uh, downloading from source for uh, window size and the uh, uh, number of packets. Uh, retransmitted. And uh, this uh, data set in includes uh, incoming and outgoing data, but uh, we only utilize the um, incoming data because we are more interesting, interested in uh, downloading from source for uh, computing. And uh, this data set has uh, 107 features. And uh, from these 107 features, uh, we extract uh, three features um, for our prediction, uh, aggregated bytes, uh, number of connections, and average throughput. Um, uh, this is uh, some data analysis um, of the January data. The figure A, CDF of uh, ag aggregated bytes. Uh, this one shows that uh, greater than 10 GB uh, downloading in one minute from roughly 20% uh, of windows 
uh, while around 50% time shows uh, light traffic less than one megabyte. And uh, figure B, um, uh, this is um, correlation of uh, average throughput and uh, aggregated bytes. Uh, as we can see that there, there is high degree of correlation between uh, those features. And then figure C is the correlation of uh, average throughput and number of connections. And uh, this is uh, uh, inversely correlated, uh, as we can see that. But it's not as much as uh, figure B, but we can still see the, some inversely correlation. Um, these are deep learning models uh, we utilize. First, uh, this uh, left one is a LSTM or GRU. Uh, this is just a uh, one layer structure. And then next one is a stack uh, LSTM and GRU. In this case, we utilize three layers uh, of uh, LSTM and GRU. And then we also have a uh, um, stack in ANN. Um, this is three layers on um, fully connected layers. And also we have a um, combination of uh, CNN and LSTM. This one can be in CNN plus uh, fully connected or LSTM plus fully connected layers as well. Uh, this is the experiment setting uh, we used. Uh, first, uh, we normalize uh, zero to one scale. And then we use uh, window size uh, one minute. Uh, this window size, uh, using this window size, uh, we get uh, a, a number of connection and then uh, average throughput or average bytes, um, ag aggregated bytes. And uh, uh, next, uh, sequence length. Sequence length is basically how many um, previous uh, sequence we are considering. So we, if we use five, um, we're gonna consider like our previous five minutes to predict next one minute, and then uh, 15, uh, 30, 60. So we uh, used um, uh, different sequence lengths. And uh, for training, we used 60% uh, of window, and then rest of the uh, data set will be in testing. And also we uh, have a, a matrix. Uh, this is uh, um, RMC, uh, root mean, uh, square error, and relative difference. And this is the uh, initial uh, deep learning experiment using January data. Uh, the right side there is a table, and uh, this is the result of the uh, RMSC. And then we can see that um, these are sequence strengths, S is sequence strengths, and then uh, these are deep learning model. C indicates CNN, D indicates. DNN, LA indicates LSTM, and G is G, GRU, and then CCC, DDD, D, GGG. These are uh, indicating the number of layers. So if there's a uh, GG, if uh, it's a GGG, that means uh, three layers of GRU. Um, from this experiment, uh, we observed that GRU or LSTM works well. Uh, compared to other structures. And uh, unsurprisingly, uh, using uh, S equal five uh, works better than longer sequence lengths. And uh, using S equal 60 works better than S equal uh, 13 and S equal 30 as well. And um, we also uh, further in investigated using different uh, deep learning structures. 
And uh, these are top 10 uh, testing performance uh, in terms of the uh, RMSC, uh, testing RMSC. And uh, we can still see that single layer models with uh, S equal five uh, quite work well, yielding a uh, better result than multi-layer multi models or, or with a longer sequence size. Um, and uh, now we know that um, GRU and LSTM uh, works quite well uh, compared to other non-recurrent non models. So now we are focusing on GRU and LSTM. And uh, um, this time we utilize one feature, two features, three features. And uh, one feature is just using um, average throughput, uh, previous R, uh, average throughput to uh, predict next R, uh, average throughput. And then uh, two features, average throughput and number of connection, and three features, average throughput. Uh, aggregated bytes and number of connections. And uh, um, this time we did uh, three times uh, implementation and this error bar uh, is indicating the uh, standard deviation and the bar is the uh, average uh, RMSA. And from this uh, experiment, we observed that uh, using three uh, features slightly work well, works consistently uh, compared to the uh, use of the uh, less number of features. And uh, this is the um, using February data. And uh, this result shows that uh, compared to January data, training error is higher, but uh, testing error is lower. So this is a comparison of a uh, different learning model using the RD uh, matrix, uh, because uh, we use this one because uh, we wanted to uh, evaluate deep learning models, not only R RMSE, but also uh, different majors. So that's why we utilize uh, relative difference. And uh, uh, from this um, performance result, we can see that uh, G5 and GGG5 show much better results than the other models, including the relevant LSTM models with much smaller relative difference values. And uh, this is the um, time complexity uh, based on GRU and LSTM structures. Um, from this, uh, we can see that um, smaller number of cells is beneficial for reducing the amount of uh, time for learning data and also uh, smaller sequence lengths uh, require less amount of time for ex executing. Uh, this is what we are expected. So this is a conclusion. Um, we established a set of uh, DL models um, based on R A and N, C N N, G R U, L S T M, and com combined D L models to predict average throughput uh, from the ex extensive uh, experiments. Our observation shows that uh, using recurrent D L models um, based on G R U or L S T M work better than non-recurrent model based on CNN and NN uh, as we expected. And the uh, simple model of its single layer and relatively small uh, sequence lengths would have uh, some benefits given the significantly high timing complexity for complicated models. And uh, this 
um, project is still ongoing and uh, we are plan planning to slowly analyze data, data channels to focus on predicting data uh, transfer performance. Thank you.